the gun industry is heavily integrated with law enforcement and the military, which at its baser levels sounds fairly intuitive, but once you dissect it past the initial layer, you realize makes absolutely no sense. In recent years, the hyperpolarization of partisan antics perpetrated by various factions on both sides of the aisle have pushed that needle even further. Well, I'm here to tell you that as a firearms enthusiast, you do not have to be pro-law enforcement. In fact, as a Second Amendment advocate, I would say that you should not back the blue. Rather, you should only back the blue that back you. I've said this on more than one occasion in the past, but I'll reiterate it. My local law enforcement relies heavily on Second Amendment culture. To derive a substantial proportion of their budget, they throw gun bashes. And I don't mean uh, smashing up guns like Big Daddy Unlimited is interested in participating in. And I don't mean throwing some kind of 1860s military fencing match or something like that. I mean that they put on raffles and such. If an agency hasn't displayed that sort of inherent affinity, then it has not earned your support. On the side, I run a website that dabbles in the sale of various items. I have a federal firearms license and it just makes sense to do so. I'm not plugging it here. Calm your tits, Mr. or Mrs. YouTube reviewer. Recently, I have had an influx of out-of-state law enforcement officials attempt to purchase items that would otherwise be prohibited to the citizens of their locale. I made a post on Instagram and Facebook and now Twitter <laughs> about the company's policy and how we handle that sort of thing. And it resonated with a lot of you. So I thought I would take it a step further and make a video about it. I've redacted this so there's no identifying information. YouTube reviewer, please chill. Company does not honor law enforcement exemptions in locales that have infringed on the Second Amendment rights of their citizens. If you order an item that is prohibited in your area and claim law enforcement exemption, you will receive a refund. However, you will be assessed a 50% restock and tyranny fee on your entire order. You are part of the problem and we do not want your business. If this sentiment was uniformly applied across the board, by companies that claim to have 2A principles at their center, then we could fix the government overreach problem like yesterday. Let's just take a hypothetical scenario and say that the big three, Smith & Wesson, Glock, and SIG, all got together and said, hey, ban states, your legislatures have said that you are prohibiting said items to the citizens of your state Therefore, we will no longer ship them to your law enforcement agencies either. So if you got a 10 round magazine limit in your state, well, you can now only receive Glock 26s, MMP shields, and P365s. Furthermore, we're not sending you replacement parts for the weapons that you currently have that you purchased before this. And that includes things like magazines that you can no longer get for the weapons that you have. That would create quite a problem. And you can basically wash, rinse, repeat for all the federal agencies. I'm getting dressed to head out to the range to do some night filming here in just a few minutes. But before we turn on the night vision tubes, there's a fair amount of setup that has to happen every single time. And for that, we use white light. The brand that I choose to use for my white light needs is PowerTac. They've been featured many times here on the channel. They are rechargeable light, and that way I can use it on a day in, day out basis without having to worry about changing out a whole bunch of batteries. If you'd like to know more information, then please hit up our Linktree account in the description box down below, as well as our full affiliates page where you can find discounts on brands like PowerTech. And the use of those codes generates a commission back to me, so you are indirectly supporting the channel just by picking up something that you already needed. So thank you very much. Now it gets a little stickier for folks when we start transitioning over to military applications. A lot of people would say that it's unpatriotic to restrict the military. And I would stop you for a second and remind you that some of the most heinous acts in human history have been done in the name of patriotism. So I caution you to check yourself. But let's say that you find yourself in that camp and you say, I don't really, I'm not really comfortable with that. Well, you just say that at a start, military installations located behind the Iron Curtain can no longer receive items uh, let's say you got a military base in California. Well, it can only receive magazines of limit 10 
and or featureless weapons. And that's not to say that they won't eventually get them from somewhere else in the military industrial complex along the way, but it would definitely play havoc with supply chain issues. Surely there could be a stance taken by various companies on state militias like <clears throat> the National Guards on whether or not they can receive items that their citizens cannot. Governments impose restrictions on businesses. Businesses also have the capacity to reciprocate in kind. So I want you to think about this. Next time a company tells you that they are guided by 2A principles, don't listen to their words. What do their actions say? And you need only answer a very simple question. Do they sell to governments, foreign and domestic, that oppress their citizens? This isn't just me trying to get on Spicy Friday or Gum Mean Review. Drama Lama Go! I'm legitimately interested in what you guys and gals think. And I look forward to a vigorous discussion in the description box down below. If you found this video compelling, please share it because we're not getting any help here at <laughs> YouTube and its algorithm. And I want to also say special thanks to those of you who are Patreon and Subscribestar supporters, as well as our members here at YouTube that help keep the lights on.